because I said your name. <laughs> oh, I got this far. All right. So we left off the fourth station. You're surrounded by jealousy. And I said, just enjoy what you have, matter of factly. It does suck, though. I had that. I even tried to help that person be as happy as me. And when they took my advice, it worked. Their life moved forward. Then they'd go back to doing what they do because they can't help. Them. It was like they can't help themselves or maybe they could. And then when they started to become successful, they thought that they could just snap back to doing it their way. And then everything would, you know, go back. Their choice, they didn't want to admit that their choices gave them those results, those consequences. I gave, I, I gave them advice toward making a different choice. Those different choices yielded better results. And as they moved towards those better results, they were, they were like, yeah, this is going great. And then they, made, then they went back to their old choices thinking that the positive results were going to continue. You can't help these people. So, you know, let's see. So even when I laid it out, it was like they didn't want me to be right, even at the expense of their own happiness. I'm no genius, but I can play things out in my head. The bottom line is you can't wait for them to be happy so that you don't have to feel bad or guilty for being happy and enjoying what you have created because life is amazing and it owes us nothing. Life is what you make of it. Even now, while all this crap is going down, you can still sleep with a clear conscience and not everyone can say that. You can still enjoy meals, drinks, sunrises and sunsets and sex. Let people have their pain and problems. Without being a dick, think of it like this. No hard feelings. This person is just experiencing one possible outcome of a decision that they made. Whether they put that together and learn from the experience has nothing to do with me. has everything to do with them. I'm just, fourth agreement, always doing my best. And also Reiki 4. The fourth Reiki principle, just for today, I will do my work honestly. I am going to be the best me that I can be. What does that mean? Highest potential vibration. Oh, look how long it took me before I said vibration. Because <laughs> I don't think I said it in the last video. Okay. So, so I, in the last video that I'm not using, because your name's in it, I went down some other path with, but it's the same information. And I asked, is, is this my stuff coming up? And they're like, no, we're hitting this hard because what she doesn't get, she doesn't see, uh, she, you take your own hard work for granted. You take your, you're a hard worker and you take this, you take that for granted. Um, and then it feels like you kind of just, I, 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 like if I'm inside your head, I'm thinking, I want to say this. I just wish, you know, I just wish everyone would work as hard as me if they, if they want to be, if they want to have what I have, if she wants that or he wants that, or they want that, just work, just pick that, go after it. But they give up or something like, it's like they don't, there's no stamina there. So it feels like you have low stamina people around you. They may have wants and dreams and desires, or whatever, but if people are looking at you or both of you, like you're lucky, uh, you are, and that's okay to be lucky. It's okay to be lucky. Um, but like, you know, at United, when I was on the bus at United, uh, they said, oh yeah, your dad was a pilot. So you know, you had a leg up. I, my, my parents made me get my own apartment. I didn't, I had to, I had to live in horrible circumstances just to pay rent because they're like, nobody helped us. So we're not helping you. And I was like, well, my parents did help me. <laughs> and, uh, but what helped was I knew how long it was going to take and I knew how much it was going to suck. And my mom didn't really want me to be a pilot at first. So she thought it was a waste of a college education. <laughs> Because my dad never got one. So anyway, I think, you know, and she was very proud when I got my big job. But anyway, it's not about me. It's about you. And if people say you're lucky, 
I know that it's frustrating. I know that it can be annoying because it's like what they're really saying is you had it handed to you and I don't have it so good or whatever. Just don't even waste a modicum of time on, on that or energy. People see what I have now. They don't know I lived in my car. You know, they have no idea what I've been through to get where I am. And, and how I got here was really started with panic attacks when I was like, I'm fine. I have a car, you know, I lived in my car and I was like, I'm actually fine. I'm actually fine. I'm actually fine. I have a car. I have a job. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not starving. I'm, and I'm healthy. I'm fine. So I'm actually fine. So, you know, people see what I have now. They're like, <laughs> they don't know like, how much work went into my life to make it into what it is now. It's, it's amazing, but life owed me nothing. And knowing that, uh, I was just grateful for a car that I, that I live in. I was grateful for being in Florida where I could live in my car. You know, I was grateful for the parking lot at a, my grandfather's nursing home, you know? So with the lights and the people that come, I felt safe there. So like, and whatever else I had, you know, everything I had that was given to me, I was very thankful for some, some lady bought me a pack of gum and I almost cried, you know, and, uh, just cool stuff, but you can't worry at all or think at all about other people. And you can't expect people in a whiny, um, well, okay. They may not actually physically whine, but if their energy feels very whiny to me, it feels very entitledly whiny. Okay. So you can't expect anybody in that kind of a situation because that's victim consciousness. It may not be overt victim, victim consciousness. It may be subtle, but it's still lower vibrational victim consciousness. And you can't expect those people to vibrate at love or be super psyched for you um, or be self-sufficient or not to be jealous, you know, jealous. I, you know, look, look at this way. I say this, I go, I'd be jealous of me if I wasn't me, you know, I, but I created this, you know, and, uh, it hasn't always been perfect. And I've, I've discreated what sucked and then created what I wanted in place. And it took a lot of mental power and a lot of physical labor, but you, you can't, you can't hinge your happiness on anybody else and you can't wait for someone else like a human being. So if we get mad at people, if you're mad at someone, what happens when you're mad at somebody is you gave them your power and now you're pissed at them for taking it. Just take your power back and go, and, Oh, so my book is going to help with this. Oh, I'm going to use. Okay. All right. So I love you. You can call me if you know, we can set up a time to talk. I'm going to move on. All right. So there's two paradigms. There's the Alexa wipe my ass transhumanism black mirror episode stuff where people become less and less capable of, you know, making their, you're raising their own food and uh, living on their own and having a generator and taking care of their crap, right? The people who can't take care of themselves are going to move They're They're going to be in the the paradigm of Alexa wipe my ass transhumanism uh, because they can't handle their lives as it is. They're overwhelmed. And so, you know, neural link or Elon Musk saying, yeah, put this chip in your brain. And it'll be like having a computer there. You can talk on your phone inside, whatever, whatever, however it goes. They're like, Oh, that would make everything so much easier. <laughs> and then there's the old school, you know, meditation, spiritual work, raising vibration, enjoyment of the natural world people. All right. So you're obviously more inclined towards that, like me. And you, you, you have to let go of the Alexa wipe my ass crew. It's time to let them go. I don't know where they're going to end up. I wish them all the best, but we, we, they, they can't just sit there and like, um, expect you know, to just, you know, all right, this is going well. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's late. Um, fifth station, your throat, uh, throat chakra, 
communication, self-expression, wide open. I'm going to need that list to help you create the life that creates the most bliss. I feel like you really, there's a lot of you you don't see. Uh, a lot of your beauty and a lot of, there's an elegance to you that's like, I know you're laughing now, right? You're laughing when I say that. But you do, you like, uh, you're the kind of person that anyone could take anywhere, like to a queen's function. And that's what I mean. You have an elegance to you. No one's got to worry about you embarrassing them ever. Uh, you're cool. So like you could be taken anywhere and that takes elegance to, to be a person that can be taken by anyone to anything that's elegance. And you don't see that. You don't see yourself at all. There's a lot hiding. So get me that list, man. Uh, and we'll help you create the, the life that creates the most bliss. Okay. I think I must have sent you the Finding Joe movie, but I should send it again. Uh, or if you have it, just tell me. I have it. I'll watch it again. Watch Finding Joe. Your soul is so capable, it's almost like a floater. It can do so many things. If all the jobs towards the paradigm shift are taken, you can chill. Think of it like you're an airline pilot on reserve. And then, I, then I've got lots of resistance, tight belly. So watch your belly. Keep breathing in, big belly. Exhale, push your belly down, grounding, grounding, grounding. Breathing in, big belly. Exhale, push your belly down, grounding, grounding, grounding. So take three of those breaths at a time. All right. But don't worry about doing. You don't need to be better than you are right now. Love yourself. Love your spouse. Love your life. Love the people you love, okay? So love, like me, <laughs> love all the people that you love easily first, okay? So your spouse and then and then me. <laughs> so so just love the people that you love easy because this is, this is a very challenging time right now, 2020. So just, just love first all the people that you love easily, okay? And just relax, okay? And then... You love the rest from here. So you stay in your little bubble of love that you have for yourself, for your life, for your spouse. And then all the people are easy to love. Then from there, from that love bubble that's easy to love, you love all the rest, but they stay outside the bubble. You don't have to love them like you love me. <laughs> you know why? It's, it's, um, do you know, the reason that I'm easy for you to love is because I love you without attachment. So me loving you without attachment, you can feel that it makes me easy for you to love. So it's just about capabilities. It's just like, just like, I'm better at loving than most people. And you know what's funny is I didn't realize that until a bunch of years ago when this woman said, play with the guru energy. I'm like, I'm no guru. She's like, you're a guru of something and you got to figure out, out what it is. So she said, have a party for yourself. All right, I'm telling you this fast story. She goes, have a party for yourself and uh, invite the angels in or whatever you're going to do. And, uh, and you got to figure out like, like an, I, I have arrived party. Okay. <laughs> so I wrote this poem. Okay. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of this, of this party that I had all by myself with my angels and a, and an ice cream cake. I ate the whole ice cream cake <laughs> and then, and I read my poem and, and then I meditated on what, what does it mean that I've arrived? What does that mean? Because the whole poem is about, I've arrived, but I, I don't feel different. Like, and it's like line by line. I'll share it with you if you want. And, uh, <sighs> what I got was, uh, because I was like, what's this guru energy thing all about? And so this is what I got. 
and listen to me. So you know me pretty well, pretty well. Like guru of loving. And one of my teachers told me a long time ago, you are a natural born master. And I was like, uh, I don't want that pressure. So she's like, pressure. <laughs> That's who you are. And I'm like, what does it even mean? You know, she's like, well, you give love without expecting anything in return. And that's very unusual. So anyway, I realized that like, I can, I can love where other people do stuff that they, they feel is loving, but when they're giving it, they're expecting something back. So they're actually creating an obligation. So most people, when they give love, there's something tied to it. There's a string. And, um, so my son is playing some game. It's so distracting. Uh, so here's the guru energy because I need you to, you're going to, I can help you with your own guru energy. All right. So you're a guru. You too are a guru of something. But when I thought that I was normal as far as loving and being able to love and that, okay. When I thought I, the way, the, the amount that I can love is this, then I was like, oh my God, the world is full of hateful people. People are so awful and so hateful. It's awful. Just so mean, so mean, so mean. Ugh. Who wants to live like this? In this meditation, I was shown, it's like, your ability to love is up, up around here and you're not normal. Okay. So my ability, I thought I'm pretty normal. They're like, nope. You have a higher ability to love than most people. Where you think the bar is so low, that's normal. So these people who you thought were hateful and mean, that's actually normal. So by understanding that you're not normal in whatever it is, my mother, for my mom, was common sense. She used to just be like, what is wrong with people? And I was like, mom, they're normal. You're not. You're not normal. Your amount of common sense is ridiculously high. It's like you, she's, she would figure stuff out like so far ahead of everyone. She's like, where is everybody? What is taking people so long? What is wrong with them? Well, their minds, I'm like, nope, that, they're normal. They're average and you're above average. So when you figure out how much cooler and, and there's all this stuff, I don't want to give you everything. I want you to find it yourself. What am I a guru? What's my guru energy? So ask, what's my, maybe I'll make a meditation for you. What's my guru energy? Okay. And you figure out where your guru energy is. Then you realize that the whole mainstream, they're not a-holes. They're just normal. This is just the normal level. And then you're above it. All right. So it'll really help you reconcile why. Okay. You're not normal. You're some sort of guru. That'll be fun. Yeah, you rolled your eyes and you just giggled. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're going to stay in the love, you love what you can easily. And then the rest, you stay here and you love them from the bubble. You love them, they stay over there at varying degrees. You can skip and pick flowers in the meadow for the rest of your life, and that would be just fine. Okay, all these tantrums that we see now, common sense isn't so common. So don't get stressed about all the stuff you see. I can talk to you if you want, but I hope you're not watching television. If you're watching, t there's no need to watch television right now. There's really not. Okay, you're the most, you're, you're important. You're, you're, you're too important than wasting your mind on television right now. All right, we could talk about that, but you got to turn off the TV if you're watching TV. So common sense isn't so common. Enjoy and work on your third eye. Please read the six books and give me a list. I'll help you. I'll help. I'll help you make it easy. It may be too simple for your ego to hear. <coughs> Holy crap. All right, I'm going to try and blast faster. You don't realize how much more capable you are. And how much more you see that anyone expects that anyone who expects success to come to them more easily, they think you or me are just lucky, but that luck is a series of choices leading to a desirable outcome. Not the I hit the winning lottery ticket numbers type of luck that they think it is. Okay, then we get into your chakras. 
First chakra, remember security, safety, grounding. You don't have to tell your closest loved ones everything. Sometimes it's a matter of waiting, being patient, enjoying a secret with yourself or one other person. You decide. Anchor in through your first chakra. Enjoy your home. Clear stuff out now. Get ready for winter and holidays. I do my Christmas cards right now so that I can enjoy the holidays. So I get all my Christmas cards done by Thanksgiving. I try and get everything bought and wrapped by Thanksgiving too. And then I just coast. Okay. The truth is we are so much better off than many famous people right now. So we're in a really good place. You're, you're, you're hiding in your little, you know, bungalow or whatever. And I'm hiding in mine. We're not really hiding. You know, we're enjoying, we're creating this beautiful space. We're enjoying our beautiful space. We're going to get our pantries squared away. We're going to get our, our houses squared away, get rid of what we don't want and then clean what we do want and uh, get ready for the holidays now and then just coast and enjoy. Okay. Second chakra. Um, that's your power and your uh, relationship and your creativity. Oh, okay. So I hit on some BS here, the second chakra. I already know a little bit of it has to do with religion. I got, so I got really angry. Remember not to hold people to a higher standard than they can uphold. Just know they're totally full of shit and be done with it completely. Never look back. Don't let it become your problem. Get strong here. Second chakra, get strong here. Fuck this. F this. Pull the power out and let the anger car drive on. Okay, so if your body is like your house, and when we meditate, we're just cleaning the house. We meditate, we're just picking up all the trash. We're just cleaning the house. Calm, re relax, calm, come to center. Big belly breathing. You're clearing your house. You're relaxing your mind. You're cleaning your house. Get angry. Now, anger, I get angry for no reason, okay? And and uh, Neem Curly Bob was like, why? You know, a couple of years ago, he's like, why do you just like throw anger out like that? Why do you get rid of it so fast? I'm like, what do you mean? It's low vibration. It's bad. He's <laughs> Or whatever. He says, low vibration. I'm just raising my vibration. He goes, yeah, but you're not using it. He said, pull the power, at least pull the power out of it before you send it on. So if your body is a house and a car and your ang and anger is like a car that drives up and then see like the back door open and feel the power, leave the car and come into the house. So the power gets out of the back seat and comes right into the house, door shuts. And then the car drives on. Well, pull, and I, I don't pull it into, I don't pull the power into my heart. I pull it into my lower abdomen, but you know, follow your own guidance. But usually I pull the power into my power center, which is two inches below my belly button, two inches inside. Okay. So get strong here in your second chakra. Oh, Second chakra is sacred. Treat it like a sacred room. You only have sex with your spouse. It's sacred. Creativity too. Don't even let the words of assholes into that room. You can number the fifth agreement. Be skeptical, but learn to listen with like a shield on first so that you know how to deal with them. Once you know someone, then you know how to treat them. And the meek will inherit the earth. Okay, so... Just because you may have been younger than someone who was older that said something that stuck with you. That now at this point in your life, you're a grown up and you can throw all that crap out. And that was just, you weren't a victim. You know, you may have been a, an actual victim, but whatever happened and whatever words were said were said by someone who's full of shit. So fuck that. They're full of shit. Fuck it. Like, just as simple as that. It's like, pfft, no. 
We have to get strong here. You have to get strong here. It's time to get strong anyway, so this is all happening at a good time. People who aren't strong enough to hear words are totally unhinged or losing their minds, okay? You just have to... Re uh, work on and then trust and rely on your your third eye you know your sixth chakra the brow chakra give you the it's like do i want to be right or do i would i rather be eating a hot fudge sundae at home rather than talk to this this unhinged person is not going to take in anything anyway just work on your intuition there are so most people right now are really not worth your time with the level that you're at with what you've done what you are capable of and what you're able to accomplish and we really want your energy on you in the now and figuring things out, clearing things out, setting a course for the future, and then using time, energy, money towards the creation of whatever the future looks like. We really don't want any energy spent even on going to back to the past to what anyone ever said, and including yesterday. Like, we really want all of it now. Just... Take all your own energy. Okay, good. Got that. Oh. All right. So the whole meek inheriting the earth is a common thing that keeps coming up. The meek don't want the earth, but the meek are who the prime creator would give its creation to the meek don't understand that they're not going to be in charge individually they will all be inheriting the earth so all of the meek all of the people who are just like peace i am peace i am successful i am successful i am peaceful I, i've got to do a video about that <coughs> I am peaceful. I am successful. Okay. That's, that's the meek. That's really the mantra of the meek. But there's like zillions. There's like millions and millions of them. Just want to be happy. I want everyone to be healthy, happy, safe, peaceful, successful. Because we know that success means different things to different people. You know, I don't make much money or any real, you know, I don't make much money, but I'm successful because I'm helping people in a way that's like so in alignment that while I'm doing healings, I'm meditating. So I never have to worry that I don't, that I don't meditate enough, but I don't worry about it anyway. I just do it. <laughs> so, cause I don't watch TV. Okay. Yeah, I could talk about that more with you later if you want. Once you know someone, then you know how to treat them. It doesn't mean I ignore people. It just means that, you know, they're going to say something cutting or they're going to they roll their eyes because of what I do, you know. Uh, I, I just, I'm not, they don't give me any credibility. You know, I, I give bless, forgive, respect their free will choice not to respect me. Or to treat me like crap and uh i love them from here but i'm not i'm my peace is my priority and i'm gonna hold on to my peace while they're rolling their eyes or whatever because not every i'm not everybody's cup of tea hard to believe <laughs> okay we don't have any kind of high standing nor do we want it but we are holier than we know and it's because we can be beacons of light that others can trust in these times, we are what people actually need. We don't need a lot of money to be happy or enjoy our well-lived lives. It'd be silly to let anyone in a perceived higher standing lay some crap on you. Gaslighting is so obvious now that I even talked about it on Sunday. Basically, what you want to do should line up miraculously with what serves in the highest best interest say in your head or out loud my highest best is the highest best show me that so 
you don't have to worry about what am I going to do? Because if you start to think about how, what am I going to do now? I've got all these degrees or whatever you've got, you know, all this training or whatever you've got, right? You're going to, you're going to try, you're going to use your mind. You're going to try to figure out how to fit into a world that was created by people who are not holy. Okay. People who are not divine. They're just people. And many of them were, not like us. So why would we try and fit into a world? We're not doing that. I'm telling you, we're creating a new world. There's a new world happening and there's a new world getting created. And, and, uh, the most freaked out people, the most scared people, the CNN people, the CNN viewers, right? They, they are pulling their energy, whether they want or not. They're, they're, they're so scared and so freaked out that their individual vibrations go down. Well, they're pulling out, they're, they're lowering their vibration. So their energy becomes less relevant when it comes to collective. So people like you and me and everybody that are self-sufficient and freedom, gratitude, um, empowerment kind of mindset, at least now we're kind of taking over this whole collective vibration thing. And so our energy is higher. Our vibration is higher. And so what we are, what we desire has a better chance of happening now that CNN is basically making its audience like go uh, lose their minds. Okay. But I mean, I'm, that's, there's no judgment in that. It's just these people are choosing to do that. They're choosing to do that, you know, whatever. But now people like you and I and other people, there's like, you know, bikers, you know, in a freedom vibration, they, they want whatever they want for the world. Uh, their energy means more now too. So it's like this, what you want to do will line up miraculously with what serves in the highest best. So you just say my highest best is the highest best. Show me that. So you come from your highest vibration, you stay in your little love bubble, and you say, my highest vibration, my highest best interest is the highest best interest of all. Show me, show me. And then, then you be quiet and you, you meditate and you allow the answers to come to you. Money's gonna, I'll tell you in the new paradigm, money's gonna kind of come in from behind you. So it's like people, like people, people like us, we don't chase money. It'll just, it just comes in. It just comes in behind us and that's, what's going to happen. So we're going to work on this. I need your list. Okay. Third chakra, solar plexus. So this is self-esteem. Well, your posture sucks. Okay. So then your third chakra says to you, say this. So think this, think this in your heart. What if I were completely happy being me? I feel that what keeps that from being the reality is that you're striving. Let go for 15 minutes at a time. The old rules were set by much less intuitive people who were constantly trying. Returning people to the pure goodness of themselves, their own hearts would allow the ship to be so easy. But we have to deal with all the tantrums and lower vibrational activities playing out. Fine. Don't look at it. Just allow yourself to have your own shift toward ease in a higher vib in a high vibration, in service to others, in a way that lifts you. And be patient. Don't let any don't let others with low vibration crap playing out make you worry or second guess yourself in relation to them. You know that I love you and you trust it. Act like everyone loves you as much as me. It doesn't mean take their advice or let their words into your being because the world is full of people doing damage that are trying to help. Laugh at what you can, and that's capitals. Laugh at what you can. You know so much more than so many around you. You not understanding that gives them so much more credibility than they deserve and power. You're giving people power because 
You don't understand how much more you understand. <laughs> it, you're giving them more credibility and yourself less credibility than they deserve and your own guidance. So much less credibility too. Okay. So much less credibility than you deserve. Could be a boss. Okay, so this could be a boss. But their way is the way you have to do something. But you can offer a better perspective. If it gets too vibration lowering, you can choose to leave that spot. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, dang, this is too long. Uh, okay. Is there anything else? I feel like... Okay. Heart. Your heart chakra. So giving and receiving love, conditional, unconditional. Clouded with stuff that doesn't matter. If you had a baby, this would clear out. I know, just kidding. <laughs> if you had a baby, this would clear out because priorities would be totally obvious. Okay. So you have a, a very tight relationship with family from before getting married. And there's a, a little bit of not wanting to break apart to start your own little family because you have no idea how a huge change can make things even better. It's like it's the same beautiful orchard, but now there's a gentle wind and sun on your skin. You didn't think it could could get better, but it did. You should never doubt that you're a loving person. If you question it, it's because you're probably steam rolling guidance that you got not to be around that person who might hold that opinion of you but they were never supposed to get that close to you anyway you were supposed to say no thanks but maybe you thought that was mean or that you didn't have a good excuse not to go you don't realize that not feeling like it is a good excuse you've never experienced yourself being as happy as where your soul wants you to go now. So you've never felt, so I can feel where you I can feel where your soul is guiding us to take you. Okay. So I can feel where your soul, I don't, I can't see all the details because that would be, that wouldn't be fun. The ego thinks it would be like, oh yeah, that would be fun, but it wouldn't be. So I can feel it. I can feel the expansion. I can feel it's like a warm, soft, comforting energy and and you feel totally safe and secure but not in an ego way not in a trying way and and so um you have never felt anything close yet so as good as you've ever felt you've never gone anywhere near where your soul is guiding me to take you okay or or you can go by yourself but you know i'm always happy to help At this point, it's just important that you realize that you have no idea how happy you can truly be. So here's another thought for you to play with when you're just motoring around in your life. Quote, I wonder just how happy I can be. So as you just, whenever it comes to, I wonder just how happy I can be. Oh, that's a good one for you. These are the thoughts that use the law of attraction most appropriately because you're not trying to fill in what it is, okay? Or the how. I wonder just how happy I can be. How happy can I be? How much happier could I actually get? Okay. Ground down through the first chakra. Then connect your heart. Then your third eye. Relax. Don't try. Don't chatter in the mind. Focus on linking first, fourth, and seventh chakras. Just link and flow. Relax. The heart says you may do something big for the world, but if you try to, you won't. Because stress and pressure of any kind will push it away from yourself and your ego would have its hand in there trying to make you do more than what would give you a perfect work-life balance. Okay, so here's a picture. See the little person? So good. So you're gonna ground first. 
then you're gonna add the heart. So just straight linking up, add the heart, and you're gonna complete with the third eye. Okay? No thought, no trying for a vision, no trying, no looking for or asking, okay? That's it. If you try to get a vision, you won't get a vision. If you try, you won't get it. If you try to change the world, you won't. Because trying is not doing, okay? It's gotta come divinely. You have to start seeing yourself as a truly divine being. There's divine being in and above or around wherever you want to picture it. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Fifth, fifth throat chakra. Communication and self-expression. It's green. There was green in there, so there's some heart issues in there. So that would be... Um, uh, okay. If I had to put words to it, I'd say, quote, I don't want to be mean. Quote. So... Uh, giving, receiving, love, conditional, unconditional. So um, that's what your heart says. If I had to put words to it, I, the prob, the um, the heart chakra problem in the throat chakra, if I had to put words to it, is I don't want to be mean. Sometimes people want to come to you for an honest opinion because they see you as fair or trust your judgment. You can say you quote, I don't want to say, you could say, I don't want to say, I don't want to answer that. I don't want to answer that question like that. <clears throat> that's still telling the truth. And that still says something. If somebody's like, do I look fat in these jeans? I don't want to answer that question. Okay. Or you can ask your heart for what wants to be expressed in the highest, best interest and ask for the right words. Tell the person you need some time to think and you'll get back to them. People, people get used to what you offer and then they know, then they know uh, what they're asking for. It's, it's, it's hard with people that you, you used to, um, hard with people used to you, a oh, one way to change. So like, there's this woman that wanted to be my friend really badly and, and uh, she had a little boy and my son, my son's age. And I started right off on the first foot being totally real with her. And she still wanted to be my friend. And uh, I I decided we wasn't a good relationship for my son. Like, couldn't stand the kid at all. And uh, anyway, <laughs> she recently got back in touch. And she's like, oh, I don't know what why we ever fell out of touch. I said, oh, I do. It was that time at the diner, you know, when you kept saying, oh, to your kid over and over and over and over. She was calling me because he's still a problem. And she was like asking me all these things. And it's like it's the same stuff I said to her years ago. It's the same stuff I was saying to her on the phone most recently. Same stuff she heard from a therapist. Same stuff. Your kid has behavioral issues because you don't have any there's you you threaten over and over we're gonna leave we're gonna leave we're gonna leave and they don't leave and I said after the fifth time we got these looks from these old people in the diner I said okay time to go <laughs> you know and we all walked out and then after I gave her directions I said okay see and she's like oh aren't you leaving I'm like no my son was fine we're gonna go eat <laughs> anyway you know it's just honesty is just easier because I don't have to remember anything and, you know, people don't ask me questions that they don't want the answer to. And somebody said, you know, you you have no filter. And I was like, well, maybe yours is screwed on too tight. You know, maybe your filter's on screwed on too tight. Like, I just keep my mouth shut, but don't ask me questions that you don't want the answer to. Because you're going to get the answer. And obviously, it'll be my opinion because it's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> so, you're so much stronger than you know. And, and. Oh my God. I'm proud to know you. All right. When you're less attached to anyone, you can feel more free to speak your truth. Not in a douchey way, just a drop and go, but make sure it's always with love. It is. It's always, so just make sure it's with love. This woman 
it wouldn't be fair to this lady if I didn't tell her, like, I'm not busy. You know, I'm not going to say I'm busy like 87 times. I don't think that's fair. It's not why. I don't hang out with you because your kid is insane. You know? And, no, I didn't say insane. I just said I, your your kid's behavior made it, made it really awkward and uncomfortable everywhere we went. But she was calling me to get my advice on that very same topic. And I said, I helped you with that when I, when we hung out and it doesn't sound like you did any, you know, you just keep asking the same question, looking for different answers. I'm, I'm going to answer honestly, lovingly, but she, she, here she's getting a straight scoop from me in two different ages and then therapist, therapist, therapist in between. So. They're not going to, they don't listen. So it's just easier for you to just speak your truth with love. All right. Right now, less people have access to higher level thinking than normal. And you still have it. Through being normally calm and tapping. Sometimes the loving thing to do is to tell someone the truth the way you see it. Especially now, because people are getting an opportunity to get a fresh start slash reset their lives. <coughs> If they ask for your opinion, what comes to your mind may be exactly what they need to create their best life or give themselves permission to do what their heart is telling them to do. Um, I'll tell you, this, we're on the last page, so I'm going to tell you this story. <coughs> when, I was, when I was hang gliding, I got pregnant. This girl that I worked with, uh, got pregnant at the same time with a very sick baby. And this older guy who was like the best hang glider on the mountain. He and I had a special bond. I think I might have reminded him of his daughter or something. But I was talking to him. And in the conversation, I was telling him about this woman who had the sick baby. And he says, why are you friends with this woman? Because she, she'd done some shady underhanded stuff. And I said, well, I'm the only one that can help her. <laughs> and I, I totally believe that at the time when I said it. I'm the only one that can help her. I, I, I know her and her situation. Blah, blah, blah. And really, when I looked at it at the time, there wasn't anyone else that even wanted to be her friend. Because she was very strange. She's still very strange. Um... Actually, she's why I'm a healer now, though, because she stole my job. She did some shady stuff, man. Uh, it all happened for me, not to me, but it, it hurt a lot while I was going through it anyway. And he said, why are you friends with this person? I said, I'm the only one that can help her. And I looked at him, and he looks at me, and he goes, that's pretty arrogant. And I was like, it is? He goes, uh, he said, do you really think that there's not another person that would be made to cross her path to help her through this? And I went, oh my God. I said, it's like a big burden was lifted off my shoulders. I was like free now. It made perfect sense when he said it. I didn't realize it was ego arrogance. I'm the only one that can help her. That's never true. You know, we're not the only one that can ever help anybody. If we choose to help someone because it makes us feel better, fine. But are we the only one that can help this person? That's fear. So, sometimes the way to help them is to, is if they're asking you, you can say, do you, my mom, this is how my mom used to do it. And she had a ton of friends. She said, she would say, do you really want the answer? <laughs> that was just sort of like her trigger warning. So, all right. Sixth chakra. Your brow. If you, if you've ever, if you've heard me say, work on your third eye, it feels like work heavy. So I need to say that a different way for you. Okay. So. Sixth chakra at the brow, intuition, right? Intuition and guidance. Play with this, play with this. 
were, you know, before you go out the door, just quick check in and say, like, do I need an umbrella? Am I forgetting anything? Just relax your whole body, relax your whole body. And you can put your tongue to your roof of your mouth and then close your eyes and look up to your third eye and just calmly and, and re relax, totally relax before you leave the house. Is there anything else that I need before I leave or whatever? Just, just check in with it, check in with it, check in with it. Whenever you remember, what should I know now? Can I be happier than this? Is there any way I could be happier than this? Just, just be thinking of this area, thinking of it, loving it, just loving and thinking about it. So I don't want to say to you, work on your third eye. And I probably should figure out a better way to say it for everybody because uh, if this is happening to you, then it's probably happening to 90% of the other people. They're, or they're like, yay, the ego says, yay, work. This is going to take forever. I'm going to keep her the same. <clears throat> okay, seventh chakra, don't confuse religion with spirituality on any level. Connect with your spirit, solid. Trust your own higher self. Religion can be seen as a form of control, but spirituality equals freedom. The closer you live in alignment with the highest, holiest source creator energy, God, your own true self, the higher vibration, 900 freedom, if you have any anger toward religion, let it go. It was just contrast. So any anger towards any religion, any type of religious anything, any of it happened to show you a contrast that, ooh, religion's not for you, but spirituality. So it was just contrast. It was any of those episodes, just clear it out now. That was just for contrast. That was just my spirit giving me contrast what i don't want showing me what i don't want done let it be easy to connect your higher self with god that's where you feel the most peace most at ease and the most bliss and then the world will change around us and i know people think i'm nuts probably and they think i'm a pollyanna but they don't understand the law of attraction and uh that should really be taught in school Maybe you and I will come up with a program to teach it. All right. I love you. And I'm so sorry this took so long. Love you. Peace.